Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting. I'm Nicole and this is episode 39. I have been so excited about recording this episode because it's my two year podiversary, which means it's two years that this YouTube channel or knitting podcast has been around. I still feel really new at it, but I can't say that anymore. We're on episode 39. It's the two year podiversary. And so I knew this was coming up. And so I blocked my calendar out for a cozy day on my porch of knitting. And I went and got myself a special treat from the bakery and so I'm excited about it. And just as it happens that it's the two year potiversary, I also have two finished garments today to show. And yeah, so I've just been really excited to record this and I can't wait to show you my finished objects. But before we hop into that, I just wanna let you know, you can find me as Prof Pearl on Instagram and on Ravelry if you use either of those. And everything I'll talk about today is linked below in the description box below this video. So let's hop into the finished objects. My first finished object is a test knit that I finished on time and even took pictures of. <laughs> so proud of myself. Okay, so this is the Barbie crop by Maral of Knitting Ruined My Life. Look how cute this is. It's adorable. I would normally be wearing it on today's episode since I'm so proud of it, but it's just, it's a little, it's summer. And this is knit in DK weight yarn and it's strand of color work. So it's a little warm for today, but it's gonna be so awesome to have in the fall. I have talked about this on my last two episodes, I think at least. Yeah, so you can head back there if you want to hear all the things, but I'll just quickly state in case you're a new viewer <laughs> what the yarns are. So this is the Wandering Flock in a color called Cosmic Tie-Dye, and you can see it's kind of swirling. That's because it's a variegated yarn and variegated yarn pools when you knit with it, which I loved, particularly in this colorway. And then the black yarn is Leading Men Fiber Arts, The Darkest Hour. And this pink is Gnome River Petal Pink. And it was gifted to me from a viewer, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. So I put it together and I just think it's great. I love how the color work pops. I remember trying to make the decision on if the black was going to be the center or the pink was going to be the flower and seeing it all finished I'm so glad I did the black as the flower petals I really think it just kind of like tells a nice like it just pops a lot up at the top and I really love that okay so this is my first product that had three stranded color work so excited about it I was nervous about how light this is and how dark this is so I, when I blocked it, I used Shout Color Catchers that I purchased on Amazon. And when I was blocking it, I put the color catchers in. And I didn't need it, I don't think, because the color catchers didn't appear to have any color on them. But, uh, so I'm usually pretty terrible about taking finished object photos. However, this was being released right before the Barbie movie how cool and this is the Barbie crop it's just amazing so I knew I wanted to take cool photos so last week I styled it with these hot pink velvet pants that I happen to have in my wardrobe and also my daughter Matilda who's five has a matching set of these pants as well and they're very comfortable they have an elastic waist pockets I bought them from like a Target Christmas collection maybe like two years ago maybe a year ago I don't know. And I always struggled in like what to style it with. I bought them so excited and all the tops I had, I just, it just didn't look quite right. And like a miracle of miracles, I put this on top of those hot pink, hopefully I'm popping in a picture here. I put these on top of these hot pink velvet pants. And it was so good, so good. 
So it was like 90 something degrees Fahrenheit out here in Oregon where I live. And I'm at the mall taking finish object pictures in a sweater with velvet pants. It's like a whole new level of like knitting dedication, I feel like. <laughs> and, but it was fun. Like you should only do that if you think it's fun. Like if you don't think that's fun, don't do it. But like for me, it was like really fun to like do because why the mall? I don't normally go to the mall. I'm not really a mall shopper. However, <laughs> at the mall, there's a movie theater. And in this movie theater, there was a, like a life-size Barbie box. And I knew this because one of my friends had her daughter like pose in this Barbie box. And so I said to my husband, Kyle, I was like, well, you take Matilda and I to go take pictures in this Barbie box because I knew Matilda would think it was fun too. So we just made a day of it, like an afternoon of it. And we went and I mean, on a hot day, but I mean, the mall is a good place to be on a hot day because there's air conditioning. Theoretically, this was an outdoor mall. So that wasn't really, anyway, <laughs> I definitely got some looks when I was walking around the mall because of the hot pink velvet pants in 90 degree weather, I think, or maybe it's just, who knows, who knows, but <laughs> Anyway, so took a picture of the Barbie box, it was so fun. And then afterwards we ate at P.F. Chang's. I didn't need to share that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was super fun. And I like keep going on about this because it's so fun. This project reminded me how much I love color work. It's been a while since I've knit a color work sweater, I feel like. Maybe that's not true, I guess, but. <laughs> I really love stranded color work. It just, it fills me with joy. Here's my last thing I want to say about this. My five-year-old Matilda like wanted to learn to knit because of this sweater. You can see why. I mean, it was a combination of the sweater pattern and also the yarn. So the pattern, these flowers. Oh, side note, Matilda thought these were locks. So she was like, why is it that you have flowers, heels, and a lock? And I was like, oh, these are purses. And she was like, oh. But these flowers like really made her want to learn to knit. And then this color of yarn. And so because of the sweater, like we did a little knitting project together. And that was so fun. And she wants the sweater just like this, she says. But the pattern is only for adults. And this is not the first time this has happened to me. I, when I first started this YouTube channel, I made a Christmas Soldana and I have enough yarn to make Matilda a matching Christmas Soldana and that color crop also does not come in children's sizes. I am a proficient enough knitter that I feel like I could knit a child size one, both the Christmas Soldana and also this with some slight modifications, but because the pattern doesn't exist, it's like just inconvenient enough that I have never done it. But I really want to. I would love, if you've modified a pattern like that at all ever, like adult to children that didn't exist, I'd love to know if you used a sweater resource book or what, if you've ever done that or thought about doing it, just like tell me your opinions below. I would love that. My thought on it for now would be that I should start with like a sweater resource book. And so the only one I have is Strange Brew from Tin Can Knits. And it has like, it's like kind of like a recipe book of sweaters. So I thought about finding a pattern that is top down rounded yoke in that book for DK weight and Matilda size, maybe a size up. So this might take me a while. And then I thought about like writing it out and then maybe like redoing these motifs, like kind of like scaling them down. That is a big undertaking, which is just inconvenient enough. I may never do it, <laughs> but like when I w wore this outfit, Matilda was like, she really wanted it. And she's got the matching pink pants. I have enough black and pink yarn left over. I would have to buy more cosmic tie dye, but it would be totally worth that investment if I actually could pull that off ever. So that's a dream which probably should have gone on dream knitting instead of finished objects. But anyway, so proud of that. And I'm gonna just pull that up nicely and keep that for when it cools off for the fall. Okay, my second finished object is my very first knitted tank top. And we have a tank top make along happening on this channel. We cast on a May 1st, the last day is July 31st. So 
if you have any finished objects, pop those in over on Ravelry or use the hashtag tank top along on Instagram. I've gotten some prizes. Well, I purchased some prizes. It'll be fun. Okay, so here's my outline tank by Jesse May Designs. I need it out of Arkansas Yarn Company's Friends Are the Rainbows After the Storm, I think is the colorway. It was part of their Sock Society box and I purchased an extra skein. I would say I used a skein in, in one third about on this tank top. I alternated yarns throughout and I used my method that's the easy alternator through it. You can't, I did, I got a lot of messages, a lot of messages on Instagram about the easy alternator method. And one of the reasons is like, why? Well, when you have two hand dyed skeins, you may not want, you may not care, but you may not want a break in the color, like when you switch skeins. And if you don't care, just keep on knitting. But I didn't want that. It's not, there's no way two hand dyed skeins can be perfectly matched. They might be close, but they're never going to be perfect. It's the nature of hand dyed yarn, especially with speckles and things. So I alternated them. I love the way it turns out. There's like a crazy, like a wild squirrel over there in my tree if you're hearing noises. My favorite part about this pattern is the drop stitch. I've, in the pattern, Jessie May says it's the most fun she's maybe ever had. <laughs> I thought that's a bit of a hyperbole, I'm sure, but. I'm not gonna lie, it was way more fun than I anticipated dropping the stitch all the way down. And she just, as part of the design, she has an ingenious way of making it so it doesn't continue raveling all the way down. And so it was just so fun. So do you ever have one of those patterns that you just make tons of mistakes on? Just like tons of mistakes and it's not the pattern's fault. It's a user error. You ever have that happen? That was this for me. I just made so many mistakes. I won't go into all of them. <laughs> and you can you can hardly tell. But one of the mistakes that was, I won't give it away the pattern, but basically there's some decreasing that's happening here. And you need to leave like kind of two stitches between the decreasing and like the edge so that you can drop your stitch. And so it's important to have your knit two togethers and your SSK is like in the right spot. And I just, it, that's not that hard to do. It really isn't, but I made a few mistakes so that when I dropped my stitches, the little knit two togethers that were in the wrong place ended up opening and having a live stitch, which meant some stitch could, stitches could drop that weren't supposed to drop. So I handled that by putting a little light bulb stitch marker in and just kind of like tacking it down, like sewing it down. And there were other mistakes. They're <laughs> laden with mistakes, but you just really can't tell and it's great. This is my first knit tank top. My reservation about knit tank tops has always been how to style them. And it just remains the same. I don't know, maybe this is a bad idea for me to pop this on right now for you to see, but it's like still an issue. It turned out precisely measurement wise with the gauge, how it was supposed to turn out. As you can see, this has like a lot of positive ease here and this goes quite low, which is again, it's not wrong. It looks like I knew what I was getting into here with this pattern. And then, you know, choices were made here. I could have been in a different tank top that like went up higher, had thicker straps, but you know, I picked the one with the holes on the front, you know, and I feel like I need to wear a tank top underneath this at least. People don't and people rock it out and look amazing. I just, for me, I feel like I'm going to wear a tank top underneath. I don't know how to style this at all. Not a clue. And so that's been sort of, let's see here. Oh yeah, there you go. You get the whole perspective. So it fits me with some positive views, which is what I wanted. I could change anything on the fit. It, it's, it's not, you can't tell with this t-shirt on underneath, but this really kind of like pokes out more than I'd like. I think I'd like to have it a bit more tapered in at the top if I had a choice. You do have a choice when you're making things, but if I knew, if I did another one. I don't think I'm gonna knit another one of these for a while. It's cause, because it's bottom up and I'm just kind of like, kind of tired of it right now. <laughs> if I was gonna knit another tank top, it would be the Moon Crush Tank. And I think that that would be one that I would maybe wear more. I can immediately think about how to style the Moon Crush Tank. I'm having a little bit of tank regrets that I didn't knit that one first because I don't wanna, I just don't know how to style this. Um, 
So anyway, if you've made one of these and you feel like you've got it down and how you style it, let me know. Uh, I would like to figure out how I'm going to style this by next week because next week is the Flock Fiber Festival. And as part of the Flock Fiber Festival, there was like a tank top tee make along. I forget what the hashtag was. Something with flock since it's a flock. Maybe I'll put it here if I remember below, but I would like to wear my knit tank top that is a freshly made garment to the Flock Fiber Festival, but I won't if I can't figure out how to style it. <laughs> We are to the works in progress section of the episode. I have like 30 works in progress or whips. I, but I'm just gonna show you what I've worked on since I last recorded, which is two things. <laughs> so this really interesting thing has happened right now to me. I signed up for so many test knits. I'm just like perpetually test knitting. This summer I test knit a vest and a short sleeve sweater. And I'm running a test knit right now for the wool gathering shawl for my design, but I don't have any test knits right now. I haven't, I haven't applied for any. I like, I, I just, I haven't applied for any. I don't have any going on. So it meant I could just knit whatever I wanted, which actually like kind of hasn't happened in a little while. So that was like really exciting. And so I went to my work in progress bins. I have these like Ikea bins I organized in the springtime. I did like a little spring cleaning and I put all my works in progress in one place and I kind of went through them and I pulled out a project bag and I had a languishing love note sweater. So when I first started the channel, this is very apropos since this is the two year anniversary, my very first knit along was the love note which was so awesome because I like loved the love note. And so I knit my second love note sweater. And then, or maybe my third at that point, I actually have no idea if I knit my, maybe it was maybe my fourth at that point. I actually have no idea. But the point is, this is my sixth love note that I'm knitting. And, and last year had a second annual love note, love knit along. And so I cast this on, but I think I just got really distracted because basically both years, the knit along was in October. It started October 1st and you know, I'm in the middle of my semester. Things are busy. I think I was also test knitting and then December is like advents and I have like, if you watch my vlog list, you know, I have so many, so many advents. So it was like, it just, it got the back burner. But what motivated me to grab this work in progress is this yarn is from Pearls and Postulates and it's Math Education Professor because the channel is Professor Pearl because I'm a professor so this is the Math Education which is my my role Math Education Professor colorway in the sock and the mohair and so when she did that colorway I thought this will like this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity I need to buy a sweaters quantity and I love the love note so Kind of envisioned making a love note sweater out of this and now the flock fibers vessel is coming up and i'm in her booth on saturday from noon to two so i thought it would be really awesome to have this colorway knit up as like a sample in her booth and so it's in a week i feel like the love note is such a quick sweater like if you monogamously knit it you could probably knit it in a week in all the sizes, I think. Because it's knit such a large gauge. So anyway, I picked it up and I had to knit a bit of the body and then I did, the, you, there's optional short weight row shaping on the bottom and I did that. Okay, let me show you. So so yeah, the, the, the pattern starts with a provisional cast on, which is why it looks this way. And a lot of people skip that and you totally can if you want. I just, I don't, and I'll tell you why in a second. And so, yeah, so I knit, knit mine. This will not be cropped. I knit it um, actually longer than even the regular length. So it's going to be like a very like cozy sweater. I was thinking I could like maybe tuck it in even. So, okay. 
I plan on heavily modifying this pattern. So the first modification of this pattern is that you can see there's no lace. The love note is, has this iconic lace pattern and I just knit mine with no, no lace. I've done this before and I've also substituted the lace pattern. And so it creates a very like kind of sweatshirty look and I love it. So I just placed it. So I don't recall the pattern exactly and you need to buy it, but let's just pretend there's 20 rows of lace for your size. And I just replace the 20 rows of lace, with 20 rows of stockinette. Now that might not work if, because obviously lace row gauge is bigger than stockinette row gauge, but for me and my knitting and how loose it is, it's fine. And so yes, that's a plan is the removal of that. So then the other thing I'm doing now is I'm going to do my other modifications. I'm going to do a tubular bind off on the bottom, not to be confused with the Italian bind off sewn bind off. I have all kinds of feelings about this. So many people, and even like YouTube channels, like when you go search like tubular cast on, you'll see an Italian sewn bind off, which is not tubular. <laughs> There's a really, really good video. It's kind of older, but it's just fantastic. And I'll, I'll link it below that talks about the difference between Italian and tubular. The only like kind of difference between tubular and the sewn Italian bind off is that tubular, you do some double knitting before you do your sewn bind off. You can do two rows of double knitting or four rows of double knitting. And this is how it gets its name tubular is then when you do the sewn Italian bind off, it like creates a tube which is what makes it a tubular bind off as opposed to a sewn bind off, Italian sewn bind off. So if that was like, if you're a newer knitter and all that was just like, what? Basically the Italian sewn bind off and also the tubular bind off are ways to make like a bind off that looks just like invisible, that just like curves around itself from the front, like the right side to the wrong side. And there's not like, you can't tell where you did a bind off. So anyway, I'm in the double knitting portion of that and that usually takes me a whole day to do like the double knitting and then the sewing i'm just kind of slow at it so maybe i'll finish that tonight okay so let me continue on with my modifications i'm hoping to do we'll see my other modification i'm hoping to do and which is why i chose to do the provisional cast on is i want to pick this up knit it and try it on and i want a maybe a little bit closer fitting neckline than the pattern has so I might go down a couple needle sizes. I might knit a couple rows. We'll see what I'm going to do. And then I'd also like to try out a folded collar on this. So I will knit twice as long as I want, fold it over and then like bind it off. We'll see how that looks. If it looks terrible, I'll just rip it out and then do the original kind of neckline. But I'm thinking about maybe trying that. Okay. Then the other modification I'm going to do is I do the sleeves and because I did the tubular here, I hoped to also do the tubular on the sleeves. And then math education colorway was a sock set and I had a mini and the mini was this yellow color and it was called number line. I got to name that. <laughs> and I'm going to embroider flowers. I was thinking about doing flowers like on the shoulder and on the bottom, just kind of heavy here, here, and then maybe like one on the wrist or something. So that's the plan. We'll see. I've never, I've never really embroidered anything. So we'll see if you've embroidered something and you have like a suggestion for a really cute flower that I should like search. I'd appreciate that. My mom suggested the lazy Daisy embroidery. I, and I think that would be good perhaps because I looked at that one and it's cute. So anyway, if you have any embroidery suggestions, let me know. So that's kind of a lot because with the tubular, it's going to slow me down. With the embroidery, it's going to slow me down. So I hope I'm not being unrealistic, but I hope in a week's time to have this done. So like one week from today, I will be on a train from Portland to Seattle to go to Flock. And I would like this to be done. Which, also, which includes blocking. So it's like, can I finish this in like five days, four or five days? I, it's possible. It really is possible. I'm not counting it out yet. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a, an effort. So anyway, that's my love note, my heavily modified love note. <laughs> 
And on that note, on the little note note, I've been like really like unsure about what to do. Part of me wants to have a third annual love note, love knit along. One, because who doesn't love an annual knit along? <laughs> and this will be my sixth love note. And I kind of like had this like weird dream to like say that I've knit 10. I mean, I don't need 10, but I just kind of like want to say I've done it. And so <laughs> I kind of want to like have another love note, love knit along. But I just don't know if you'd be interested in that. So let me know. Then the other part of me is like, okay, you don't have to just have love note, love nil longs until you get 10 love notes. Like you can just be satisfied with your, your love notes. And then a different sweater. There's so many sweaters. Like my friend Brenda and I want to cast on this sweater by Caitlin Hunter called the Halu. And it is, it's different from the love note, but it's kind of similar in the sense of like oversized fingering plus three held together, lace little bits, circular yoke. And so, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I also want to really knit it lento. So anyway, if you have any kind of feelings and about a future sweater make along in the fall, let me know. I do like having the October 1st as sort of like the date, whether it's the love note or not. Okay. I am excited to show you my next work in progress, which you might be expecting <laughs> if you watched my last episode. I bought some linen quill when it was on sale at Pearl Soho around the 4th of July. This is peach stone and I bought a bright pink color called Flamingo. And I had that Barbie crop test knit and also my wool gathering shovel design. And so just like kind of to reward myself, I wanted to cast something really big on. And this will be really big. And so it's just a wee beginning. And both Maddie from the We Sure Needles podcast and Melissa from Stitches Be Slipping, or I said Stitches Be Slipping, <laughs> both of them suggested starting with kind of the boring color and I'm glad they did because I can already see my enthusiasm for this like waning. Like these, <laughs> I'm like, what, four rows in? Like these rows are long. And so like, I really wanted to start with a bright hot pink, but I know that like, the only thing that will motivate me to knit this first triangle is to get to the hot pink yarn. So I'm so glad I started with this color. I, as I'm knitting this peach stone color, which is like kind of like, I mean, it is beautiful, but it's also like a boring neutral compared to the other bright colors I usually knit with. <laughs> so a little part of me was like, maybe I should have done, I was like playing with the idea of like a raspberry color and the flamingo. And I'm like, maybe I should have done the raspberry because then I at least would have had a color <laughs> For this giant triangle I'm gonna knit. Anyway, I'm not gonna go on and on about this because everybody knows the wrap and everybody knows the half and half wrap probably. I will say I'm making just an ever so slight modification to the pattern, which is that I am doing German short rows instead of wrap and turns. Because I just don't wrap and turn. I just don't. German short rows are like the best short row that ever exists. Like I can't be convinced otherwise. <laughs> so anyway, I just, that's the only modification. And I'm going to knit the large size and this is going to take me forever. So I'm not going to show it every podcast because that, I mean, I'm just not, <laughs> it's going to, this is basically a blanket, not a shawl. And, but I did want to get it cast on because I'm taking the train up from Portland to Seattle for a flock. I thought this would be really great train knitting. Also, just, just next month, like less than a month away, my contract at my university, like run nine month contracts. And so my contract starts on August 15th and I need to go into full professor mode with lots and lots of meetings on August 15th. And I just can't think of a better knit for a meeting than this because I just, I'm going to knit, 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 and I will be able to look forward and like look at people's faces and not like look at the powerpoints like be able to participate but also like have something fun to do so this is gonna be great meeting today <laughs> so it's cast on so it's ready to go now we are to the acquisitions part of the episode and this is like a really heavy progress keeper moment here <laughs> so okay here's what happened I've really, really 
wanted a narwhal progress keeper from Charmed and Dangerous, like honestly for probably like a year. And it's, they sell out quickly. And there should be no reason why I don't have one except for this thing, which is that every Saturday at 9 a.m. my time, which is 11 a.m. Central Time when the narwhals are posted, I am swimming. And so, anyway, I, the stars aligned and one day I was able to get one. Oh, I know it was on a Saturday. It was like a random posting where I was like on Instagram and she was like, hey, they're up. Okay, so, and I, it was like perfect because pink with strawberries. It's just too cute. And so then I was like, well, I need this strawberry one. This is cute little strawberry. So I just, I really can't even, actually I should probably, I should put the strawberry on my half and half wrap here so yeah so cute and I just I don't know I love pink it's my favorite color I love strawberries I've wanted a narwhal for a long time so it was like wonderful now I will say every single one of her narwhals are just adorable so anyway I showed my mom the narwhal and I was like I want to have one and then that following Saturday was a beach one. And my mom was having tech issues. And she's texting me. She was having tech issues, technology issues. And so then I'm in the pool, but I have my watch on so I can like see the text messages. So I love her. So I hopped out of the pool and ordered her a narwhal that she really wanted. But since I was ordering one for her, I was like, well, I'll just get myself a second narwhal. I'm using it as a stitch marker right now because I was on the porch and I accidentally dropped my stitch marker below me. It's somewhere in the bark dust underneath there, but I'm not digging for it. So I took my progress keeper off and I'm using it as a stitch marker now. But this one's a beach one. And I love the beach. And my mom and I feel like it reminds us of Matilda because she loves the beach too and she loves narwhals. And so anyway, so lots of progress keepers from Charmed and Dangerous. I could honestly like buy one of the little narwhals every single Saturday that she has them. Every single one of them is adorable. Last Saturday, I did not buy one, but last Saturday they were like little narwhals holding crochet hooks and knitting needles and a yarn ball. Like I just, I couldn't love her narwhals more. Okay, so then there's more progress keepers. So here's the situation. Sucre Sucre Miniatures was the very first sort of like progress keeper that was food item that I ever bought. <laughs> I got my first one at Indian Tangled West, like the year that Matilda was born. It's like the first yarn event I went to, first time out of my house without Matilda. And I got this like little teacup one. And so I follow her and she was having a sale and like really good. And so I thought I needed prizes for the tank top make along. Like I didn't have any prizes. So I was like, this is great. So I bought prizes. Oh, I guess I don't know what those are. There. And they're so cute. Look at this. One fell off, but donuts, little sprinkle donuts and like a coffee cup. It's too cute. It's just, I'm trying to decide if there'll be two separate prizes, but I'm thinking it might just be one prize because like coffee and donuts, like cute, right? So cute. And, and this was like an extra that she had in the box. So I didn't buy this, but it came with. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put that as a separate prize too. I have some yarn that I've dyed. And so I was thinking I might attach this to the yarn that I dyed. We'll see. I haven't put together prizes yet, but Anyway, these are definitely part of them and the sale motivated me. It was a really good deal. So, and they're so cute. So, more progress keepers. So my mom and I both get the Arkansas Yarn Sock Society box. And last month there was a progress keeper in there and a coupon code for Simply Serving. And so then my mom bought using the coupon code, some charms from Simply Serving. 
And these ones are really cute too. Oh, they'll show up. This looks like a hot cocoa. It's so cute. And then, I don't know if this is like a hot cocoa or a full latte kind of pouring over, but both are very cute. So anyway, so many progress keepers. <laughs> it's just like a big progress keeper month. So uh, I don't know. I just love knitting jewelry, like stitch markers, progress keepers. They make me really happy when I'm knitting. And one of the things I like to do on my like YouTube channel is like when I'm in the middle of a big project, I will like, when I'm done recording, move my progress keepers and so then I can see how much progress I did since I last recorded. So that's always kind of fun. And that's, I had a, my progress keeper in here so I could see where I had been since I picked up my whip. And I was gonna show you until I dropped my stitch marker below me. <laughs> but I mean, I've knit several inches on this. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, I just, they bring me joy. Okay, there's one more acquisition. There's kind of a funny story behind this. <laughs> okay, this bag. I don't even know where to start with this bag. Okay, let me start with the maker. That crafty little fox. Okay, so this is all wax canvas, which will break in. You can wipe it off. My understanding is you can't wash it, but you can wipe it off. And what, there's a ruffle and then there's this pink handle. When I saw this on Instagram, I just knew I had to have it. And I saw it because these bags, these exact bags are gonna be at Flock. So I could have waited until Flock to get it. But I just was like, what if I get to Flock and they sell out? Because the show's open on Friday, there's Saturday morning, I just don't know what the day is going to entail, right? Like, and I, there's plenty of things to go around for people. Like there's not, like I'm not saying that these are going to sell out or something, but I was just like, I knew I really, 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 really wanted this. And so I was like, if I can nab this for Flock so I don't have to stress at Flock, it'd be great. So I did indeed. Okay. It's just so high quality. Like this leather, it's just amazing. So. The funny story about this. I think that I've discovered a new maker because of Flock. And I think that this is a brand new bag, a brand new maker to me. I really do. I really think that. I even like talk about it to Kyle. Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but it's a true story. So then I end up like going through my box of whips, digging through, and I'm like, I'm gonna do my Love no, and I'm gonna show you the bag that my love no was in. It was in this bag, it's a beautiful bag. It feels like Pendleton wool, nice sturdy canvas. It's just such a good bag. And I bought it in September last year from, is it? Wild Knits in Salem, Oregon. And yeah, I met up with Anna, it was like her birthday, Anna from Zebra Yarns and I, like, no, it was like the time of the semester, I was feeling kind of down and I remember I bought this like kind of lift my spirits a little bit and I did. And I put my love note in it in October and it was like just bringing me joy. I love this print, I love this material. So I knew about this bag, it's not like I forgot about the bag, but I forgot who the maker of it was. And it is that crafty little fox. And what happened is I made my love note and I'm using this lovely bag. And I was like, gosh, this reminds me a lot of my new bag I just got. And then I was like, because it's the same maker. Now this bag is bigger than the other one and it's not wax canvas. This one has like pockets and things in it. So like, I have like my swatch in there and I have my little labels. And it's plenty big to keep my Love Note sweater in there. And yeah, so apparently I now have two bags from the Crafty Little Fox and who knows what will happen at Flock, maybe I'll have three, but I mean, I just, I know not everybody's into zippers on their bags and I can respect that because like if I was knitting right out of this, like it could snag on the, on the zipper. I have this bag here that my half and half's in that's no more of a bucket. So like I totally respect when people don't like zippers, but I really like a nice zipper and I actually, I don't struggle too much with like the snagging or 
like I, I haven't had any problems with it yet but to be truthful like I oftentimes will take the love note out all, all the way out on my lap at night however I did take this to the movies and knit and knit out of the bag and I've been taking this to swim lessons and knitting out of the bag and the zipper hasn't been a problem so anyway big shout out to this maker here and they will be at block if you're going to block like I mean the fabrics right like how beautiful anyway I'm going on and on and on it's a little rough <laughs> So we're to the sip sip knit segment of the episode. Cheers. If you are not sipping something cozy or knitting right now, take this as an opportunity to pause and <laughs> go grab your knitting or something cozy to drink. I have had the busiest summer of my entire lifetime and I will talk about that in the personal section. But I wanted to use Sip Sip Knit as like an opportunity to like slow down and celebrate. <laughs> so I'm going to just slow down and share about my tea I'm drinking. So I'm drinking an oat milk latte from David's Tea. I wouldn't say this is my like most favorite David teas, but it is in like an enjoyable cozy tea. I'll read you some of the ingredients. It has apple, roasted mate, gluten-free oats, fennel, coconut rasp, natural coffee cream flavoring, rubus, black tea, coriander, brittle pieces, sugar hazelnuts, carob, coffee leaves, roasted chicory root, black tea extract, and stevia extract. So you don't need to add any sweetener to it. I do add a little cream to it, so it gets this nice, like kind of creamy color, creamy brown, light brown. Um, I think this is tea would be a nice coffee alternative if you like coffee and you're looking for a tea alternative that kind of isn't coffee but is low caffeine and kind of fills that coffee feeling you're having, like, or craving. And then because it's the two year pot anniversary, that's partly why I was like, I have to make a tea, a nice hot cozy tea. You know. Is it middle of summer and warm? I, I still drink a hot drink, even when it's hot out. All right, so I don't normally have food, but basically I just really wanted to, like like I said, slow down and enjoy the day. It's the anniversary, and so I stopped at the bakery this morning, knowing this afternoon I was gonna like carve some cozy space for me on my porch here to enjoy recording and as part of recording, like pause this and like just sit here and knit and eat my scone, which this year I had to go gluten free, which is unfortunate because I really, really love the gluten things. When I announced I went gluten free, there's a lot of people on here that commented that they're gluten free and they no longer miss it because of how they feel. And I relate to that in the sense of like, I have maintained a strict gluten free diet, except for when I was at Disney World, I did have a I did have a pretzel, <laughs> but um, I've maintained a strict gluten-free diet because I do feel exponentially better. Like it's wild how much better I feel, but I do miss the glutens, but I miss <laughs> the gluten things less when I go to a bakery by me that has like a whole case of gluten-free items. They have like cinnamon rolls, scones, breads, and they're legitimately delicious. This isn't always the case for gluten-free items, but these are legitimately delicious. So this one is an orange biscuit, orange chocolate chip scone. And so I'm going to enjoy that once I'm done recording here. Most importantly in the sip, sip, knit section isn't what I'm drinking or eating or how I'm cozy on my porch. The most important thing is to slow down and say thank you for being here. I, it's like mind blowing to me that this space exists really. It was something I wanted to do for a long time and I was scared to do it. This year, my word of the year was fearless. And I'm just, I couldn't be more grateful that like two years ago I took like a moment to like 
be courageous and brave and like put myself out there. Um, like President Nicole was thankful that past Nicole did that. And because this YouTube channel wouldn't exist without all of us. Like it's not like, it doesn't exist because I upload videos. It exists because you're here and you're commenting and you're participating and you're encouraging and you're giving advice and you're my friend. And so I just, I couldn't be more grateful for that. I, I truly, um, it created something I didn't think would be possible. And it, and I've made so many friends on the internet that I've never met face to face. And some I have met face to face now. And I just, I mean, it's overly cheesy. You probably paused it and moved on at this point, but it's from just very, very sincere gratitude that this exists. Um, you know, as a mom, as somebody who works, you know, it can be very isolating sometimes. Like, it can be hard to make friends. It can be hard to have a buddy to knit with. And, um, and so this has filled like a little gap I had, like something my heart was craving, which was like knitting friends. And so anyway, thank you. <laughs> I'm going on and on, but thank you. Speaking of knitting friends and like, filling gaps and like dreams and things like this like probably my number one knitting fan is my mom and so hopefully at this point I'm putting a recording of her right now on here she was one of my test knitters for um, my wool gathering shawl which will be released in early August at, at the flock fiber festival and yeah, I mean, she's actually knit two of them basically. So the first one she knit, which I'm showing hopefully video footage of here in Wild Star, Wild Star Fibers, which if you haven't checked her out, like stop what you're doing right now and like go on to Instagram to Wild Star Fibers, like so good, so good. And I think last time I checked, like last week she had, these things are called mystery skeins. They're like $20 each. You should just buy some mystery skeins because I can attest that every single one of her skeins is like gorgeous and neon <laughs> and so just incredible so anyway I bought my mom one of the skeins at the Rosie yarn crawl I started like being a society and my mom used that skein with some pink mohair from knit picks a lot and put together a very bright shawl which is very different from my wool gathering shawl and yeah so and then my mom's also knitting the exact one that I have like basically she like ordered the same colorway and everything from pearls and postulates so she's like probably my number one my number one viewer slash subscriber slash fan <laughs> um and about that about the test knitters so I wouldn't have test knitters if it wasn't for this YouTube channel and if you don't have test knitters you can't like get your designs tested out there and so I'm just really grateful about that too and the current group of testers that I have right now are just incredible and I can't believe how fast they're knitting this shawl because this shawl is massive like I I really didn't think anybody would sign up to knit this massive shawl in four weeks but people did and people are actually done with it and maybe I'll be maybe I'll be popping some pictures up here but it just and their interpretations of the shawl and the different colors they use, like obviously very different than mine and very cool. And so anyway, I'm just really grateful for this community and the ways it's like branched off into sub communities. Like there's like a little Zoom group that meets the first Thursday of every month here. I feel like we're all friends there. And um, yeah, okay, so this is beaming long me thanking people, but thank you. So before I sign off, since I'm talking about the wool gathering shawl, I do want to just kind of answer a quick question I got about that. I've gotten some messages that are like, is it only available at Flock Fiber Festival? And no, it, it like the wool gathering shawl can be purchased on Ravelry. It's just being released the day of the Flock Fiber Festival when I'm there, which will be fun for people that are visiting. Maybe it'll be fun. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it won't be fun. It'll be fun for me. <laughs> But it'll be part of the Pearls and Postulates booth and just cut Pearls and Postulates has put together some amazing kits. I'm actually going to be tempted to buy a kit to knit my own shawl. <laughs> so, okay, so you can get it. 
if you're not coming to flock you can still get the pattern if you're interested and you don't have to buy a kit from jessica like to knit it you could use a fingering you have in your stash and a mohair that you have or if you do a mom did she used her fingering and then went on to knit picks and found some mohair that would go with it We are to the personal section of the episode, which means there's no more knitting from this point forward. I don't know why I took us up there, sorry. So if you'd like, <laughs> if you'd like to any of the knitting content, consider liking and subscribing. And if you don't want to listen to the personal section, thanks for making this far in the video. And yeah, what have I been reading? I finished reading Carrie Soto is back and I might have mentioned this a few episodes ago but it's like I've been trying to primarily use my library and then you have to read books in a certain timeline if there's a waiting list and so I had to return it before it was finished so I was able to get Carrie Soto is back again and I finished reading it and it was so good so good I just have to recommend this book I'm not even a tennis player. This book is the main character is a tennis player. Carrie Soto is back. She's making a comeback. I'm not giving anything away. It's in the title. I'm I've not I've never played tennis. I took racket sports in college as like a class. And I played tennis in that moment, but that's it. I have a tennis racket with the thought that like when I was in my twenties, like how I go out and like whack it. But I mean like I'm not a tennis player. And I loved it. I mean I was reading like tennis scenes and I was very into it <laughs> like it was so good so Taylor Jenkins Reid has written four books I think and I've read two of them Melbourne Rising and this Carrie Sow's Back and I did kind of a double take when I was reading Carrie Sow's Back because she mentions Mick Riva who's in Melbourne Rising and so there's this like easter egg kind of moment there's actually a couple Easter egg moments where if you've read Malibu Rising, there's things that happen in Carrie Sow's back that like relate. Wild. I love that. But they're not like a series. It's not like you have to read Malibu Rising and then Carrie Sow's back. There's just Easter eggs. What? I love it. And it's a fiction. But I feel like it's a fiction of its own genre. And maybe I'm being melodramatic here I, because I'm not a literature expert here. In any capacity, a math education professor, but if it feels like it's its like own genre of like California rising to fame, like because Malibu Rising and both both Malibu Rising and Carrie Sow's Back take place in California and not in current times. Like I'm pretty sure Malibu Rising, if I'm remembering correctly, was like the 60s to 90s, and this is. So his back was definitely like, I feel like the 90s. And, you know, that's like 20, 30 years ago now. Uh, crazy. So, <laughs> so, yeah, like, it's, it's like kind of like vintage. I don't know. Like, I'm being so ridiculous. Oh my gosh. But it just, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was, I was like, enraptured by it like I loved the story so much so that like there is not a singular doubt in my mind that I am going to be reading Daisy Jones and the Six and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo like I'm going to read all of her books I'm going to read all of Taylor Jenkins read like I loved it loved it okay I'll stop going on about how much I love it I'm currently reading right now Happy Place by Emily Henry I need to read it quickly I have it on my Kindle from the library. I waited a long time for it. I was so tempted to buy it at Costco. There was like a hardcover book of it. Inexpensive at Costco, but I was like, wait for your library. And I did. I waited. It's here, but now I need a speed read. <laughs> okay, so personal section. <laughs> Personally, this has been the wildest, busiest summer of my entire lifetime. I'm going to turn 40 this summer in August. I, and I actually, just a side note, this is the 39th episode and it just, I'm like, so serendipitous. I think the next time I record, it's going to be the 40th episode right before my 40th birthday. Oh, 
what? How fun. Anyway, I just think that's super cool. Didn't plan that. And yeah, it's just been the busiest summer and, it, and I would say it was all my fault it's busy. Like I made decisions. Here's what I think happened. I think it was like February. And here in Oregon in February, it's like you're done with rainy season. It is just rainy and it is gloomy. And there are sun breaks and there are sunny days and I get outside every single day. I do, I make sure I get a walk every single day. And you know, and, and, and it's not all down, just to be clear. It's not all gloom, gloom, gloom in Oregon. Well, maybe I should say that so people stop moving here, but it's like, um, but it does rain a lot and, and it is gray. And so it can get kind of down. And so I think in February, when I was feeling kind of down, I was just thinking about all the fun I wanted to have in the summer. And so then I was like, oh, mermaid dance camp, Matilda, let's do this. Track camp, let's do this. Soccer camp, let's do this. On top of the things Matilda's already involved in. And, and let me be clear, when I sign Matilda up for something, even though she's doing it, it's kind of an activity for me. Example, Tuesdays, she has swim team and after swim team she has ballet so i have to get her all like decked out in her swim outfit right like and you know she's five so like she's got like a little swim cap little swim goggles i have the snacks so she's ready and then after that she's gotta go to ballet so i gotta get the wet swimsuit off fully dry to put the tights on you know it's a whole thing so i feel like her activities are my pre-activities <laughs> But I love doing activities with Matilda because she loves them and she gets joy out of them. And so it's like, you know, serotonin, like she's happy, makes me happy. She's doing things like, I don't know, we're active or out of the house doing things, which I love doing. Um, yeah, so anyway, and then her violin, she takes violin lessons too. The group lessons for that also amped up over the summer. So she had group lessons and individual lessons. Anyway, same thing was to say, her schedule it was just like a scene. And then I chose, I chose, I technically have the summer off. Like I don't have to work over the summer, but I chose to work. I did things where I was like, I want to work. I mean, these sounded like fun projects. Like I developed a geometry class for future teachers. I'm really proud of it. It was so cool. I taught a master's class online. I took on two doctoral students that I'm advising and I, Oh, I'm developing, <laughs> I'm developing this class where I'm filming videos. I won't actually teach the class, but I'm like filming the videos for the class. Like I'm the face of the class. <laughs> and anyway, and but, I mean, like there was like a teleprompter, a little video crew, like, so it was like a lot of work and that's just my teaching. And of course as professors, like there's this expectation for writing papers and things like that over the summer. And I did a lot of writing this summer. And so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is it's just wildly busy. And I'm somebody who enjoys being busy, but I also like moments of like slowness too. And so like, I just love being lazy at home. Like not lazy, that's not the right word. Like um, I love just like enjoying being home, like sitting on the porch, sitting in the driveway. And it's just been so busy that I haven't been able to do that. And so, you know, the, the clock's ticking, the summer's almost over, and I've just basically like been wildly busy and working like the whole summer. It, after making the joke, I'm Summer Nicole. <laughs> so I think I've just like been like thinking about how I need to be intentional in these last few weeks before August 15th. I just need to intentionally like enjoy time. So I think that's why I like really romanticized today's recording and knitting on the porch as I was just like, I just want to enjoy my porch like on the summer. I'm gonna get myself a scone and I'm gonna just enjoy it. And I have, I came out here this morning and I watched a knitting podcast and I'm, and I'm recording. Like I'm, I am fully embracing this moment <laughs> today <laughs> and and I'm trying to plan like fun things that are restful. So 
like this week I asked Kyle if he could put Matilda to bed without me so that I could go see the Barbie movie and so I went and saw the Barbie movie and I'm so glad I did oh my gosh let me know if you've seen the Barbie movie I loved it so much like there was like my expectation of liking it and then there was like what it was which it really exceeded my expectations it's a humorous movie and so I wasn't expecting to have like kind of like deep philosophical thoughts while watching the movie but I did right because it's kind of about creation and your relationship with your creator and so there's that whole thing there's a feminist lens through it that is just delicious and <laughs> just I was like cry laughing in the movie theater it was so good anyway it's one of those movies that somebody said to me, do you want to see it again? I'd be like, yes, please. So anyway, um, let me know how your summer's been. Like I would like, I would just would like to know, particularly if you're in this stage of life where I am with like young children, like I'm like wondering like, is this the new normal where it's just like wickedly busy? Maybe it's the new normal. But I was talking to Kyle, my husband, about it. And I was like, you know, I can make decisions for next year. Like I can make a decision to sign up for less camps. But, you know, it's like, who knows what February Nicole will be feeling like. Maybe she'll be feeling like it's dreary and it sounds really fun. <laughs> so next week we've got soccer camps. So, you know, we're going to relive. So last week was track camp which just side note was incredible. I mean, Matilda tried the pole vault, she did a javelin, did a long jump. They, they, they just exposed the kids to like all the different events, which is like pretty cool. And next week is soccer camp. And so I don't, we haven't done soccer camp before, so we'll see what it's like. It was our second year doing track camp and we loved it. So I think that's how I was like, well, I'm also gonna sign. It's like kind of the same people putting on the soccer camp. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sign up for soccer camp. She did kind of a soccer thing last fall and loved it. So we'll see. I'm oversharing. I'm just like really oversharing here. So anyway, I'm going to stop. <laughs> All right. So let me tell you what my schedule for flock is going to be. If you're interested, that's what we'll end on. So on Friday, I'm going to take the train up. Hopefully there's not a lot of delays. I've heard there's some delays on the Amtrak. <laughs> and so I'm gonna take it from Portland to Seattle. My thought about the train as opposed to driving was, seeing it's like knitting time. Seeing I could knit the whole time, which I'm gonna be by myself on the train. I just like singing audiobook knitting was gonna be amazing. Like to have three to four hours completely by myself or longer depending on the lace, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna take the train up. My friend Jordan, she lives nearby. Actually, um, she lives pretty close to where the Flock Fire Festival is. So that's gonna work out really well. So I'm gonna stay with her and I'm gonna have dinner with a bunch of people organized by um, Gary from Gary Knits Gary Rides. I'll link his YouTube channel below and like, yeah, I'm kind of fangirling a little bit because like it's gonna be so cool to meet everybody in person and meet Gary and so anyway I'm just really excited about that and then on Saturday is when my ticket is for the market so I'm gonna go, go shopping and I think Gary is doing a meet and greet like at a different time that I'm doing a meet and greet so I definitely plan on like going to that booth and also I think Gary's main greet is like at 10 a.m. And I have booths that I'm just like, I have to go to. Like Super Glow, the bag maker. Like I just, there's, there's so much. I was also thinking I should write a list of projects that I want to buy yarn for so that I can be like intentional with my yarn purchasing because I'm sure that it's just going to be overwhelming in like a really amazing way and I want to be like intentional with my purchasing. So then I will be in the Pearls and Postulates booth from noon to two. I also have a wish list for Pearls and Postulates. Like she's got mini skeins set of like her stem collection so like all the women that she's made like yarn colorways for 
that are careers in STEM. So you can get mini collection, a mini skein collection of all of those. Like that is on my list. I mean, I have so many mini skeins. So it's like on one hand, it's like I don't need to be buying more mini skeins, but I do love some stripes and I'll figure out a fun project to do with it. And, and it's a way to have all the colorways without feeling like I'm missing out on something. So I, that's on my wish list. And I just got cute little bags that say like Steminist on it which is like a play on feminist, but like STEM, love it. So anyway, that's some of my wish lists for a flock and coming up next week. I'm having, t I have intentions of doing a short vlog of flock. We'll see what happens. Like I, it may be that I just never have time to take my camera out and it doesn't happen or it might happen. Let me know if you're interested in that. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. And if you made it to the end, Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.